What is up, everybody, man? Welcome back into the Blue Bloods. We have a huge special guest today. New Cal Poly head coach Paul Wolf is with us today. Coach, the, the first question is, how have these few weeks been again? And congratulations on being named the next head coach at Cal Poly. Yeah, you know, I, I've been blessed to be in this situation. It's a, a, uh, a wonderful university, um, you know, unbelievable academic reputation and, and what we do here academically. And then from a football perspective, the commitment moving forward is is uh, is very big and um, excited to be part of that to grow this program into a national caliber program. What was it about Cal Poly that really, I, I guess, stuck out to you yeah. in terms of, you know, because you, you were there, you know, offensive line coach for a while. When, when they presented you the chance to take this head coaching position, was it just a no brainer for you or were there some things that stuck out about the program that made it the job for you? It was a no-brainer, and um, for a number of reasons. I think I go back to when I was in high school. Uh, I grew up in California, outside of Sacramento, and in, in Davis. And uh, my brother actually went to school down here. But you know, um, and I considered going to school and was going to go to school here at Cal Poly. Um, but then the football route took me elsewhere, and I had a lot of scholarship offers and those types of things. But um, one, there was a connection. Number one, um, and I've had friends and, and family that have gone here, and um, just knowing like the potential of this place, uh, the location, the, the school that it offers and the, and um, this, you know, being at other institutions in the big sky and seeing teams at the national level, at the, at the FCS level, just felt like what, if this place gets committed, which it is now, and we put forth the uh, financial investment that is needed, you know, you could do special things here. You know, I always felt like at Eastern Washington, um, you know, financially, we were always in a challenging spot tough place to, to get going, but we were able to get that thing at a national competitive level and uh, felt that there's just so, so much more here at this university to offer one location in the state of California with the athletes that are in the state, but then just all the other things that come with this university. And, and for people who don't know, I mean, you're a three-time Big Sky Coach of the Year, won two Big Sky Conference Championships, was a finalist for the FCS Head Co uh, Coach of the Year Award. When you look back at your time at EWU from 2000 to 2007, has the conference changed at all? Or do you feel like the, the strategy for success is still pretty much the same? I, I think there's a certain level of strategy for success that goes at every institution that you have to have. Um, but the conference has definitely changed from, from what's on the football field. I think now just top to bottom, the teams are bigger, stronger, um, definitely a, a way more physical and commitment to, to running the football than there used to be. Obviously it was known years ago for spread out and throwing the ball all over the place. Um, but definitely the teams have changed in that philosophy. Um, you know, so there's just not as much of the passing game that you see. Don't get me wrong. We throw the football out here, but, but um, it's definitely changed from physicality. And then just like I said, top to bottom, just more teams that are strong for, uh, on the bottom end than there used to be. When And then when you go and look at your time at Washington State, you know, it didn't end how you wanted. But what was the biggest learning experience for you from there that you're going to take into this head coaching experience and apply? You know, just I think the biggest thing is just <clears throat> when you come into a program, you just never know what you're walking into and. And, um, you, you know, and at Washington State, uh, I had some insiders there before I took the job that warned me that it was in really, really, really tough, tough uh, spot, you know, just the internal piece of the, the program and the quality of, of the uh, talent at that time. And so um, you never know it till you get there. Um, but we did do a good job rebuilding it and bringing in great young players and just didn't have the time to see it through. And, and um, we were on track of doing some great things. Mike, Mike Leach took over and he did have some really good young talent players to work with. And um, it just wasn't there when I showed up. And um, I think when we got here, there were some similar situations uh, at Cal Poly. Um, difference was a complete philosophy change from schematics. So you're in triple option offense. Uh, and then all of a sudden you want to go to a spread, you know, pro balance type of a, a, a system. So there's not a lot of receivers in the program. There's not a lot of big offensive linemen. There's not a quarterback. A, so it's just a different scheme. So we've had to kind of flip the, the recruiting model and what we wanted to do. And then defensively, same thing. We just felt like it, it needed an upgrade in our players. And, and um, we've been doing that and working hard. And we, we haven't gone the transfer route, generally speaking. It's been a high school uh, way to do this. And, and I do think that long-term and for consistent success, I think that's what we have to do. And um, I do think 
our worst of it is behind us the last two seasons. And I think then moving forward, um, you know, we're on a great track and we've got some great young players that are going to, you know, pop up and people are going to be excited to watch play. And you spoke about, I mean, kind of beat me to my next question because the next one was you see a lot of FCS coaches talk about, I mean, you see a lot of different strategies. You've had FCS programs bring in 40 transfers last season. Others are only here and there. You guys only took a handful of transfers. Like you said, you've really built through the high school level. Is there a percentage or strategy on taking transfers for you guys? Or is it just, you know, a, a, as they come, we'll just evaluate each prospect individually? Yeah, I think it's more of that. I think it's as they come, we'll evaluate and see how they fit. Um, we still are going to be high school dominant in our recruiting. I don't know that our academics here lend to just taking any transfers left and right. Um, they've obviously got to have quality academics to be able to get into school here. And so we're, it just, we're never going to be in a position where we're going to want to take 10, 12 young men. Um, I think this year we took six, and I think that's a lot for us. Um, and really, we didn't necessarily seek them out. You know, it was all they all kind of came to us and like, wow, okay, the, wow, this could fit. Um, and I, I'm not so sure that that'll be kind of the, our primary goal moving forward. It'll be just a wait and see, but we will not be just scouring the transfer portal. It's just not what we're going to be doing. We feel like we've got great young men that we need to develop and want to develop. And uh, we want them to, that to be the core of this program. When you look at the staff you put together, there's there's a lot of big names, a lot of proven guys on the West Coast. Was it more about relationships with you? Was it more about you know what what they what what they have proved at previous locations? How did you approach building a staff at Cal Poly? Yeah, I think all of what you just said. I think it's uh, you know a proven track record, someone that I might have a connection with, um, and we're still filling it out. I think when we get this thing completely filled, I think. You're going to see some some coaches that have uh, maybe played at the highest level for sure. Coaches that have a great reputation either in recruiting and, and coaching their positions. So I feel really good about that. And, and our cohesiveness as a staff is very important to me. And uh, I don't know, you'll find a staff that gets along better than this group does. Maybe a little too much at times, but uh, it's uh, but but that chemistry is 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 very important. Players see it and. Um, knowing that we're all together and, and uh, as long as we have that ability as a, as a unit, we can do great things. And I, I do, I think this is an outstanding football staff and, and uh, moving forward, it's only going to continue to improve as we win games. One of the biggest waves you guys made, I mean, I'm sure you knew this question was coming, is former five-star Sam Heward announces his transfer to Cal Poly. He has a really good relationship with new offensive coordinator Sheldon Cross as well, going back to the high school level. How did all that come together? And, and when you look at what Sam brings to an offense, you know, why, why did you guys feel like he was the right guy to bring in, even though you guys don't take a lot of transfers? Yeah, I mean, again, that was another situation where we didn't, you know, I, when I started working with Sheldon and, and talking about him coming here on, on our staff, you know, it was the early part of December. And we went through a couple week process where I talked to some other coaches and I do have a past relationship with Sheldon. And so we decided to do that and, and went that route. And Sheldon's a great addition for us. But really, you know, Sam was never in a discussion because he was on the Washington football team, University of Washington. And uh, we had figured that, that Penix, Michael Penix, was, was a senior and was going to move into the draft. And I think Sam th saw the same thing. And so not until he decided and declared shortly after the first, of, I believe shortly after the first of the year that he wanted to stay another year and utilize his sixth year of eligibility that Sam then made that decision that, that maybe I need to put myself in a situation where I can play immediately. And, and there's no guarantees he's going to play immediately here either. Cause I, I think we got some great young players at, at the quarterback spot, but obviously he's in a position to play. And, and um, that's when the decision came and then he had reached out and, and we're like, heck yeah, we'll we'll do this, you know. We'll, we love to have him here, and and um, and that's how it kind of went. And uh, but again, we weren't seeking him, and we weren't looking for the transfer quarterback. Um, but this was just a, one we felt we couldn't pass up. I completely understand there, and I, I think you know I've had some other coaches on, and they talk about you know how important those relationships are to keep in, in terms of with the transfer portal. When you recruit a guy, you can't burn the bridge if they yeah. don't don't come to your school. But looking at just I would say this upcoming season, what do you want? What are your expectations? What are the goals? And what's this kind of the mindset of the coaching staff? What are they instilling in this team on what you guys want to achieve year one in 2023? Yeah, I think we were so youthful and, and injured the last year or two that we really got pushed around at the line of scrimmage and uh, really all over the place, to be honest. And, and um, <clears throat> I think just getting this football team in a position where we can physically match up week in and week out from a strength standpoint, 
um, we got to get we got to get in that situation. You know, we just felt everybody's presence on the football field this last year. I don't know that anyone really felt ours. And so it's time for us to to change that narrative and put us put ourselves in a position to get bigger and stronger and, and to, to be more physical football team. I think if we just do that, you know, you're going to see a dramatic, dramatic change in our win loss column. And so that's our big, big primary goal right now across the board is, is let's get bigger. Let's get stronger. Um, let's understand the system a little bit better, which we will do. Uh, I think those combinations will definitely lead to a better product and, and ultimately more wins. And I've seen a lot of head coaches take different approaches. You have the the head coaches who still are very involved in terms of coordinator positional roles, and then you have the more of the CEO type approach. How would you describe your head coaching style? Are you going to be a little bit more hands-on with the offensive line and the offense, or are you going to be more of a CEO? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll probably be a little both. And, and what I mean by that is I'm definitely going to be involved in the offense, um, and, and that's always been kind of my thing. Um, but I also want to give people the freedom to be creative and to do their things without micromanaging people. So I, I do believe in that 100%. Um, I think it's my job to oversee the players, oversee the coach and staff and, and the direction uh, and just making sure we're staying on, on a positive course moving forward. But uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll have my individual work with some of the players and I'll work with those guys. Um, but I also am not going to gonna completely put my hands uh, knee deep in everything. Um, but I do need to make sure I see things from a big picture as well. And as spring approaches, you know, spring games are up, coming close. I mean, there are some programs that have already started two weeks ago in terms of spring camps and things like that. Who are some Who are some younger guys that have started to kind of pop during the workout process, the early part to spring, that you're really looking forward to being emerging stars for Cal Poly this year? Yeah, you know, we have a, a couple young men, particularly, uh, you know, starting on offense. Michael Briscoe's a receiver they didn't play a year ago. Um, uh, and he's back and we're anxious to see kind of where he comes back into, into play. Um, we have some offensive linemen that, uh, I'm anxious to see kind of step up, uh, just did Van Waite, uh, Kavika, uh, Fitzamanu, um, Thomas Cole transferred from UCLA. Um, there's some old linemen in there that we want to kind of see. And then, um, <clears throat> obviously at the uh, quarterback position, you know, where, where does Sam Heward fit, uh, in there? We know that, um, that uh, Bo Kelly is going to get a lot of opportunity to participate and get a lot of reps. And uh, Jaden Jones, the quarterback for us, who started at the beginning of the year, is coming off a knee surgery, but he'll be able to do some individual and some skelly type things. And then, you know, on the defensive side, you know, we, we feel good about our defensive line. We've got a lot of guys back and um, anxious to see what Ethan Calvert transferred from Utah linebacker is going to do along with, uh, um, along with Jacob Jones and, and um, uh, Kenny Olson and, David Meyer and and uh, Drew Sulik, we got a linebacking core in there. They're in, interesting, and then and then our back end, you know, Dominic McCormick, uh, Brian Dukes. Um, these are these are big, long, rangy safeties um, uh, that we'd like to kind of see progress. And um, but it looks like they're all in, the, in, a, in a good good pattern right now where they're working and what they're doing. And the final two questions, one, you know, I, I used to play offensive line, and I think offensive line, if you haven't played it, coached it, anything like that, it's so hard to understand all the intricacies on how to have a good offensive line. You can look at the stars, look at the talent, but if they don't mesh chemistry-wise, it's not going to be a very good offensive line. So what do you look for in a good offensive line unit, and kind of what is your mindset on what it takes to build a great offensive line? Well, but like you said, there's multiple facets of that, right? And and I I do think you know guys that work quickly together, they're mentally kind of on the same page. So they a lot of times they don't have to use all the terms and words that you need out there. That they once get to that comfort level where they're just in sync and they're working together and they trust each other and they know where they're each one's going to be. You know, you want to have that kind of chemistry there. Um, and and I think we're getting close to that. Um, again, what a transition. You know, you look at what Bob it, what. Uh, that Johnson did at Georgia Tech and then and then the changeover from that system. It takes a while and and getting those offensive linemen on the same page is is a challenge. And um, but I am looking for that, looking for that kind of chemistry up front, uh, that kind of you know communication. And then again at the end of the day, just a, a strong, tough physical attitude, you know, and uh, as a unit. And um, we got to develop that. That's not in, ingrained just yet with us. Um, but I, I do feel like we got a lot of the pieces in place. Now we just got to work and practice to get ourselves connected and, and get ourselves, some, you know, to build some rhythm in what we do. And the final question, Coach, what is your message to all the Cal Poly fans and supporters out there on what you need from them and what they can expect from you guys this season? 
yeah, you know what? We just want them to show up and and uh, be loud and 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 um, be excited about what's what's coming. You know, with John Madden Center coming, um, you know, and, and what that's going to bring to our university, um, the young players we've bought into this town. I mean, it's a good time to buy your tickets. You know, and and uh, it's going to be you know it's going to be exciting football and we're going to be darn competitive and and. Um, you know, just uh, jump on. It's it's going to be a lot of fun, and um, we're excited about where we're headed. And I know the future is extremely bright right now. It definitely is, Coach. I appreciate you giving me some of your time. Um, I'm really looking forward to what you guys put on the field this season, guys. If if you're out in Cal near Cal Poly, go buy your tickets, be in attendance this year, and you're definitely going to want to stay tuned for what Coach Wolf and this new Cal Poly staff have coming down the pipeline. But guys, for Coach Wolf, for myself, and for the Blue Bloods, we are out for right now.